Willie D. Live. So, so it's 1999. Y'all banging. Dope House Bing. going hard. Bing. 2000, Dope House going hard. 2001, y'all, Dope House going hard. Ah! Immediate break. Well, there was phone calls earlier where, where they would be going on, and Tootie Arthur would be saying, hey, man, this, this, you know, something's going on. You know, this, this girl's saying, you know, whoop 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 And I'm listening like, what? What the fuck? And, uh, yeah, next thing you know, we would hit the road. Would ha- you know, I kind of was doing my own thing because you got to remember, in 2000, I finally had my solo album. And Carlos got so big at a point where he wouldn't hang with us no more. You know, that's how, you know, he was doing some big shit. So we were kind of me, Grim, Happy Perez, Russell Lee. Mm-hmm. We were kind of being the Lone Star Riders back then with Max Manelli. And we were kind of doing shows and shit. And he kind of was just, you know, he was huge. He was, huge. He was like fucking the Beatles at the time. So, and I was hearing some shit on the phone, like, you know, the girl, whatever, that he was messing with for going at him hardcore and shit. So it was probably like about six, seven months. And then all of a sudden, oh, shit. It's, it's, not, it's like, what the fuck? Yeah. You know what I mean? Now they 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 they, they uh, get to the dope house and make some arrests and shit. I'm like, oh, shit. Yeah, I, I was totally caught off guard with that. I mean, I was totally surprised because dope house was just like, dope house was handling business. South Park Mexican, who we call him Carlos, who is yeah, Carlos, Carlos yeah. is the biggest dude, you know, one of the biggest guys in the city, easily, and Crazy. and and really got besides Kid Frost, mm-hmm. in in terms of uh, what Mexican rappers are doing, he's the biggest. Yeah, you know I saying? met. See, I I met Kid Frost first. Kid Kid Frost, Kid Frost when, introduced, introduced me to SPM. To yeah, SPM. yeah, yeah. And in, 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 in Mexico City, right? In New Mexico. In, New, in, New in Mexico, Albuquerque, right. yeah. New Mexico. Uh, yeah, yeah, New at Mexico. A car, at, a, at, a, uh, at a car show. Car show, right? And he had told me, he said, man, this motherfucker, SPM, South Park Mexican, he, he he shuts it down in Houston. I was like, who? Fuck no. I was like, who is this, Frost? Come on, man. So he was like, man, they take me to a strip club. Everybody has to go except us and the strippers. I was like, yeah, right. And next thing you know, I met him. He's like, yeah, I'll fly to Houston. Flew me to Houston, and fucking Fr- Frost was right. That shit was real. You never looked back. Never looked back. Well, my house got raised. See, I was selling crank at the time, too, in, in California. So I was, crank, it turned into meth. Now it's called meth. But I was selling crank back in the days. And my roommate ended up getting on the shit. He ended up getting on the crank, man, chasing pussy around, man. So he ended up getting on the shit, and got us busted, got the house raided. So I never went back home. I said, oh, I got to stay. You know, his... his uh, and you never had a warrant for your Never arrest. had no charges, man. Never had no charges and none. Never had no charges. He was a <laughs> he was a federal agent. He was a border patrol dude, man. He had the he used to go pick the shit up in a bad. I mean, he, in a badge and everything with a gun and go pick it up for me. It was crazy though. Yeah, I would just got come, the perfect connect. You I had it. I had to. I used to come home <laughs> to thousands. I used to come home to money. I'd be gone doing my thing. Come home, he's like, yeah, yeah, Ron. I got a. It's been like a month. I got about four grand here for you. I'm like, cool. And then he started getting on. Once that once. He got a divorce. Got his own he got high on his own fucking supply. Started, we call them bag chasers. Started fucking with them bag chasing chicks. And they got him. And he got on it. Started act, tweaking out, acting funny. Got set up cold blooded. They put him over in front of a school. So they added another 10 year charge because he had that much drugs in front of a school. So going back, going forward to 2001, mm-hmm. when the news hit, mm-hmm. rapper South Park, Mexican accused of molesting child mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you get the news what's the climate like what at do- dope house records at this time well we weren't really hanging at the dope house that much anymore like i said me grim happy we were staying on hardy toll road so we that was our compound so when we heard the news it was like what the fuck and uh but like i said tootie had already been saying that the girl's kind of tripping on she wants some money and all that shit right and, and who so, is this girl the girl that accused them, that touched her daughter, that they were friends. They were, they were, they, you know, they were, they were, they all knew they grew up together actually. So it wasn't like some random shit. It was, they grew up together. Who and the grew girl, up together? Uh, the girl, not the little girl, the mom. The, the mom, mom grew, grew up, up with, with who? SPM and his wife and they were best friends. So these are two couples who are best friends. Yes. The, the girl would stay the night at Carlos's house and that's how it happened. Like that's how they, 
the little girl would stay, stay, stay the night at with Kong. his daughter. This is the nine year old girl. Yeah, right. Because that was three girls, uh, and all that that they went after him over. Well, three yeah, they went after girls. him also for the baby's mom. He had a baby with the fourteen year old that that he stayed him in a strip club. And all this, I wasn't around back then, so all this, all I get, ever got was information that they gave me. That's all I ever knew. It's mm-hmm. not like I did any research. I would just they would tell me shit, and I'm like, oh, okay. Uh. So I would just go off what I was told because I never really was around was around this shit. Like I said, when he had the baby with the fourteen year old, that was like in the earlier nineties. So I wasn't still in California, so I don't even know about that. This new shit, I remember the brother was kind of getting on phone call, saying, "Man, they're trying to get Carlos dirty, right?" And I'm like, you know, not tripping because Carlos is the man. You know, you think, oh. And then when that news hit, it was like, wow, they re- it's really going through. And I was still thinking, okay, well, he'll get through it. And I remember being in um, Denver, Colorado, doing a, a, a show with the Lone Star Riders. Grimm's on the phone talking to his brother, and he said they gave that motherfucker 45 years. I was like, what the fuck? It was, then it just shook us up, like, what the fuck? That's crazy. I remember that like it happened today, bro. I was at my aunt and uncle's house watching the news. It was midday. Mm-hmm. And they came in, and I'm thinking to myself, first and foremost, whether he did it or not, I'm not, I don't know what happened, mm-hmm. but whether he did it or not, he's an American, he's rich. America doesn't care about victims of sexual assault. I do, but mm-hmm. America don't. Mm-hmm. I, We're learning that. America was built on sexual assault, all right? They <laughs> they came in raping and pillaging, okay? So that's why I don't I believe that a lot of the elected officials and stuff don't really take sexual assault seriously unless it has some type of political implications behind it or something, right? Yeah, I think um, And that's what I think happened in this situation. I think this was like some this had some type of political implications behind it. I don't think they cared for one moment about those little girls. I do. But mm-hmm. I don't think they cared about those girls. I think they used those girls as pawns to take down Carlos Carr. Well, yeah, they, they they took him down, all right. And, and uh, you know, the whole case was crazy because I thought he was going to get off because I said, no way, he didn't. In my head, I'm thinking, fuck, and I'm just giving him the benefit of the doubt. Like, who, that's some weird old crazy shit, right? Like, nine and, years and, old. and what made you think him, he was going to get off? I mean, was that— Well, because— Did you have any, any type of evidence that— Well, because— like I said, the brother had been talking on the phone saying they want some money, right? Okay. The girl, the mom wanted so some. You that's think what this th- is a pure extortion thing. So I'm thinking, okay, well, it can't be true because if a motherfucker, I don't want no money. If they really did it to my kid, I don't want no money. I want some fucking you want that justice ad, you want and some that. Ad, yeah, yeah. All, uh, you know you what I mean? Some like contact. money. You know what I mean? If I can't get a hold of them, then prison for life. You know what I mean? That's that's my mentality. So when he told, and I keep thinking like. Well, they should want us some money. Is what I'm just going off what the brother had told me, Tootie, mm-hmm. Arthur. So he tells me that. And, and then it rings in my head like, okay, so it can't be true because who would want money if someone touched a kid? You want blood. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? So it when they got him, I was like, damn, they must have had some fucking evidence. But then I come back and find out there was no evidence. He still got convicted. It was just word against word and the about that girl, case. And the little girl was on the stand saying that she think uh, she think it may have been a dream. It yeah, could have been a dream. Yeah, that, that on the stand, poor girl. How, I, how do you how do you convict someone based on I think I might it it I may have been dreaming? I don't. That's that's the crazy. I don't know. And, and the crazy and and SPM hired the most expensive lawyer you could find in Houston at the time was Mike Ramsey. Who was big and doing the Enron shit at the time? So he he spent a lot of money on lawyers, and they still. You did. think Mike sold him out? I don't know. <laughs> I don't. Uh, what I heard was Mike never really went. Mike sent one of his uh, what do you call it? The cronies, just the young guys coming up. Yeah. Sent one of those dudes to deal with him. Yeah. Like one he of, took one the of case. His yeah. Yeah. He took the case. Right. And got bred it up. But he didn't work it. But he didn't really work it and shit. So that that's that's that's, that's what I. Uh, conclusion that that uh i was given and uh yeah it's still you know it, it's shocking it, it i still don't believe he actually touched the nine-year-old in my head but who's to say no one but, knows but you know what i mean if he did he's the worst motherfucking thing walking in, in on, on two feet you know what i'm saying it was the worst fucking thing but then they got him for the uh having a baby by the 14 year old which i think 
sealed the deal, which which that which could he, not be. He did. He, he did can, have that. He could not argue that. Yeah, you can't argue that. Which he said that he met at a strip club while she was stripping at fourteen. It's, and that's all the story that I knew. I have no idea about any other. Like I said, I just go off what they told me. That's all I knew. So.